The flickering light from the television cast eerie shadows across the walls of Emma's small, dimly lit apartment. Emma, a young single woman, had retreated to her apartment in the heart of her hometown. She locked herself away from the world, hoping to find solace in the familiar confines of her sanctuary. The year was 2027, and the world outside had grown darker and more uncertain than ever. An ultra-right-wing government had seized power, plunging the nation into a bitter civil war, tearing apart communities and families alike. But the war's relentless advance was impossible to ignore. The news reports on the local TV network were filled with tales of destruction, suffering, and bloodshed. Each passing day brought the sounds of more chaos and violence closer to her door. The ever-encroaching civil war had given birth to a crippling fear that consumed her every waking moment. Insomnia gripped her, and her nights were spent restlessly watching the unfolding news. A pack of cigarettes beside her, a constant companion in these dark days. The stress and anxiety drove her to chain smoke, offering a fleeting respite from the terror outside her walls. But as the smoke curled and danced in the air, it mirrored the uncertainty and disarray that clouded her mind. Outside, the distant sounds of gunfire and explosions light up the streets. As the civil war progressed, the once bustling outskirts had already turned into a desolate ghostly place, haunted by fear and uncertainty. Families were torn apart by ideological differences, fueling hatred and division. Emma couldn't help but feel trapped, a prisoner in her own home, waiting for an unknown fate.
The TV showed repeated images of desperate families fleeing the war-torn regions, seeking refuge in neighboring cities. Each time she saw those children's faces, Emma's heart ached with sympathy, but her fear paralyzed her from taking any action. She couldn't muster the courage to step outside and help. It was safer to remain hidden, sheltered within the four walls that had become her shelter. Days turned into weeks, and the war's advance continued relentlessly. The government's oppressive tactics grew fiercer, silencing any dissenting voices with ruthless efficiency. The news broadcasts became increasingly censored and truth became a rare commodity. In her isolation, Emma's mind began playing tricks on her. Shadows in the corners of her apartment morphed into sinister soldiers, and every creak of the floorboard sounded like an approaching army. Her insomnia deepened and her body grew weak from the constant anxiety and lack of sleep. As the war crept closer, Emma could no longer ignore the consequences of her self-imposed isolation. She knew she couldn't hide forever, and the war would eventually find her. It was a realization that filled her with even greater dread. that once offered comfort now closed in on her, suffocating her with the weight of her own fear. She clung to her television, now her only connection to the outside world, even though it brought her nothing but despair. The world outside was a chaotic battleground, and she felt like a helpless spectator, unable to change the course of events. The news anchor's voices became a haunting melody of doom and destruction, a constant reminder of the horrors now unfolding just outside her door. Emma yearned to switch the TV off, to shield herself from the TV news that permeated her living room, but she couldn't bring herself to do it. It was as if by watching the approaching soldiers every move, no matter how terrifying, was a feeble attempt to maintain some semblance of control. Her cigarettes, once a source of momentary relief, now added to her torment. The acrid smell filled her lungs, leaving her coughing and gasping for air, mirroring the suffocating grip of anxiety that threatened to engulf her. Emma knew she needed to break free from this cycle, to find a way to escape the clutches of her fears, but it felt like an insurmountable task. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across her apartment, a faint knock echoed from her front door. Emma froze, her heart pounding, fearing that the enemy had finally arrived. She turned up the volume on the TV and pulled at her bed cover, 
praying it would go away, but the knocking persisted, growing louder and more insistent. Every fiber of Emma's being screamed at her not to open that door, but her curiosity and fear mixed in a cocktail of torment drove her to the entrance. She peered through the peephole, her hands shaking violently. Outside in the hallway, sat a desperate-looking woman. Tear stains ran down her dirt-streaked face. The woman pleaded for help, explaining that she had fled from a neighboring town that had fallen into the hands of the oppressive government forces. Emma's heart wrenched with compassion, yet her mind raced with fear of the consequences of opening her sanctuary to a stranger. A battle raged within her, torn between her desire to help those in need and her instinct to protect herself from the horrors outside. Emma's anxiety grew stronger as she faced herself in the mirror, and the woman's pleas intensified. With each passing moment, Emma felt the claustrophobic walls of her apartment tighten around her, as if they were closing in on her very soul. What would be the consequences, of letting a total stranger into her darkened shelter?